everybody. Hello. This is Super Morning. And I know that you already get an interactive with us on all our social media platforms. For those of you that sent in messages during the News Flash segment, thank you, thank you very much uh, for doing that. Continue sending in the messages. I noticed that we had a couple of messages on Facebook as well. As well, I'll do my very best so I can read them. I can read those messages from Facebook because, yeah, we always urge you to send in your comments on Facebook as well. But it seems that we are leaving you out. Don't worry. We will not do that to you anymore. We'll definitely read your messages from Facebook. My name is Asia Dua Akomia. I love to be called the Golden Girl. And it's time for me to bring you updates on all the stories that are trending on social media that's what's trending okay to the very first one you have been waiting for updates i spoke to uh, uh, someone a friend of mine who was present at the birthday par party of the eldest son of apostle salifu amwaku uh, whose youngest son unfortunately was involved in an accident a car accident that's uh, claimed the lives of two individuals. Well, um, hmm. he said something very interesting, and it seems like this case has become a national issue. And when he said that, I said, it's true. It's a national issue. Every single Ghanaian is involved in this. Every single Ghanaian is anticipating and waiting to see and hear the steps that the Ghana police service would take and also the judicial system. What exactly would they do about this case? Anyways, so updates that has reached us as of yesterday, uh, late afternoon was that the Ghana police service has currently, or currently they have in their custody, the parents of the young man who is the son of Apostle Salifu Amwako, who crashed the white Jaguar into the black Akura on Saturday at East Legon. And so, yes, you know that the Ghana Police Service, although they'll bring out your name, but when they bring out your pictures, they will cover your face a little bit and all that. But we all know that indeed um, the parents are currently in the grips of uh, the Ghana Police Service. So we are going to read exactly what um, the communique said. So if you can have the communique from Ghana Police Service. Now it says, police update one on fatal East Legon accident. Parents of suspect driver arrested. The Ghana Police Service has today, 15th October, which was yesterday, 2024, arrested suspects. Bishop Elisha Salifu Amwako and Muha Amwako, and unfortunately, they are suspects. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Parents of the suspect driver involved in the fatal accident that claimed two lives at East Ligon on Saturday, 12 October 2024. Now, investigations have so far established that 12, on 12 October, suspect driver Elrod Salifu Amwako, age 16, so he's 16 years, driving a Jaguar SUV vehicle with registration number GN780120, with one other occupant rammed into a 4x4 Acura vehicle, also with registration number GR254223, driven by Joseph Aka, with four other occupants at Mensa Wood Street at East Legon. Both cars caught fire and burned beyond recognition. So the black Acura, meaning there were five persons in the black Acura, and the young man who is Elrad, in the white Jaguar, there were just two, so himself and his friend in the passenger seat. Okay, so if that on goes like the investigation further indicates that three of the five victims in that Akura vehicle during the accident were rescued, and the other two identified as Justine Agbenu and Mami Juma, both 12 years of age, oh God, lost their lives. Two of the rescued victims who sustained minor injuries were treated and discharged, while the third is still on admission, receiving medical attention. The suspect driver with the other occupant in the Jaguar vehicle were also rescued and are currently on admission at the hospital. 
The parents of the 16-year-old suspect driver, Bishop Elisha Salifo Amwako, and Mua Amwako, are currently in custody assisting the investigation. Meanwhile, a team from the Police Management Board, led by the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Dr. George Ekufudampari, today, 15th October 2024, visited the bereaved family to commiserate with them and also visited the injured at the hospital. The police would like to assure the public of a thorough investigation into the accident to bring closure to the affected family as we continue to remember them in our prayers in this difficult time. And also, um, Paul, Grave, Paul Grave, after he left uh, the news last segment, did say that Justine, one of the 12-year-olds who unfortunately lost a life in the accident, was the only daughter of her parents. Very heartbreaking. And so may their souls rest in perfect peace. And we can't wait to hear and see more updates in relation to this case. How do you feel about it? What are you hoping the outcome would be? Would you say that this young man, this 16-year-old, should be put behind bars? Now, this is a gentleman who was one of the rescuers uh, when the accident happened. And he gave a different view, a different view of really what they had to do. You know, somebody asked the question that, ah, so that is a residential area. Didn't anybody have any fire extinguisher to try to help? You know, when the fire, when the fire was gathering the car and everything. But it looks like, they tried. Some fire extinguishers were used, but then it was getting more serious whilst they were waiting for the fire service truck to get there on time. So let's just take a listen to what this uh, eyewitness said. It's a home to form a spark here. It's a spark here and full side. No, I want to know to me. It's a a purge at once. It's a driver, no black one. You know, and it's me skipping now. Oh, baby, you see. It's we who is an irrational store in a more fire extinguisher and the Aquagian apply. And to me, small girl and a new woman. It's the anomaly, you know, I try a half twelve years girl say girl around bed twelve. Now, no, I can't even mamma. You try to, you know, man is sending such in team. Die in the air, you just wait. It's me, a new Anna, I just a big Anna. Not tank of who be chum, a more politan politan, Tomona, a poor matronia stop you home. And you do in Sunugu Mansana fire for a neighbor. Inside the car, you can't see anything. You can't see anything. You can't see anything. Inside white one, you can't see anything. 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 You can't and ye na eja mo shea ke wo mo shea no mo eja gwa na mo wo eh black one yeah black one na no mo o sha ye na bi accident accident ni dey quiet one in the course because no wo top speed to over speeding into odu wa say ni no start say o realize what the two jan two no and no chi break o hwen so a enye ye na aja e fail no dey ko ball black one ni and no say chi ni ko ta le wo na wa bubu o ni na ni eja And teacher said, all right, he tried boring break, it's break nine Now, that top speed, how do you expect that you will hit or you'll pump the brakes and it will pump within that short distance? How do you expect that to happen? And right now, two 12-year-olds have lost their lives. So like I said, how do you expect the outcome of this issue to be because indeed it has become a national issue. Let's take some comments. What are netizens saying? Success says kudos to the Ghana Police Service. More of the same service to the motherland. I'll applaud today. You always gotta applaud the Ghana Police Service because they're doing so good. Albert Natai says, it looks like this is just a mere formality. Arrest them and let them go after a few, and let them go. After a few hours, the public interest in this case is massive. Make sure justice is served. We do watch. Scanty season says, great job. I would really love to see how the issue pans out. Biggest bite, Agra Enter says, this is sad. My prayers to you, Bishop Salifu Amwako, in this tough time. May God see you through.
And I know that we have quite a number of young people who watch us right here on Prime Morning on Joy Prime. Being stubborn, being disobedient will seriously take you absolutely nowhere. It would take you nowhere. Stop being stubborn. Stop feeling like you're on top of the world. Stop feeling like you are. It's all about you in this world because it isn't about just you in this world. We need to be very careful to my young people out there. Anyways, okay, so let's move away from that. But we'll definitely be bringing you updates in relation to this story. Anytime there's an update, we'll make sure we update you right here on What's Trending on Prime Morning. Moving away, let's talk a little bit about Galamse. You've been saying a whole lot of things, asking questions. Why wants the current president of the country say something in relation to Galamse? You want to hear his voice. You want him to say something that will make you feel like, yeah, you know. <laughs> he's indeed fighting against Galamse. He's the same person that said that he's going to put his presidency on the line against the fight of Galamse. And you're not seeing anything, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So yesterday, a video that popped up on social media was when the president, so the first gentleman of the, of, of the country, and the Commander-in-Chief himself, uh, President Anadadanko Kufuado, where he was asking the leader of the opposition party, John Dramani Mahama, who is the flag bearer of the NDC, to make his stance clear on Galamsi. You know, Zagana for Ebekasa, because this is not what exactly they expected. But let's take a listen to exactly what the president said. Somebody who wants to be president, he can't change his mouth. One side of his mouth is saying one thing, the other side of his mouth is saying another. It is not good for him. In the 2020 election, after the government had acted on the Ghana he went around all the mining districts of Ghana to tell them that when he comes, he's going to give amnesty to anybody who has been attacked by, on the Ghana issue by my government. So it's not surprising that MPP lost in all those constituencies. That when he comes, he will now enforce the Galamse laws. We want the NDC, four-time NDC presidential candidate, to come clean, to tell us where does he stand. This is what I meant when I said that I was prepared to put my presidency on the line. I was prepared to take the political risk in dealing with them. Somebody who wants to be like I said, Ghanaians would definitely react to this because this is not what they're expecting. They're expecting the president to say something better about the situation that we are currently facing in relation to Galamse and not try to make it look like the leader of the opposition party hasn't cleared or declared his stance on Galamse. Let's go on social media. Uh, Ihadro says, very sad coming from a president who won't talk to his people unless he's on a platform where nobody gets to ask him the tough questions. It's sad, but well, we are all in this together and we are watching. Password Ghana says, those on here unhappy under this post. You think John Mahama, who can win the presidency, should not have a firm stance on this national menace of Galamse? Then I can say you don't want Galamse to be dealt with in the long run. A berated boss says, so this is what will make Ghana great again. This man is the biggest mistake Ghana has made. Good luck to y'all. <laughs> Leo Yusuf says, did he ask for Mahama's stand on the e-levy and betting tax? <laughs> oh, Ghana for. <laughs> Oh, Ghanaians are very interesting, aren't we? But what do you think about that as well? We really want you to be interactive with us. It's not only on Newsflash that you have to be sending all those messages. Send it in other segments as well. Let's share your thoughts. What do you think about what the president said in relation to uh, the opposition leader's stance on Galamse? All right, moving away from that. Let's talk about the explosion. Uh, as people say it's the blasting that happened two days ago on the Kaswa Winneba Road that claimed the lives of some people and currently quite a number of people are receiving treatment because they have been greatly injured.
Now, updates in relation to this matter is that residents decided to go and attack the Chinese contractors that are working on that road. They say that every single time before there's an explosion like that, because you know there has to be an explosion for the rocks to be uh, to come down. Now, Yankee so they can do their work smoothly and very well. Every single time they give them prior notice. But why is it that this time around, no resident was given any notice at all that there was going to be an explosion in the rocks? And so these residents, a big crowd of Chinese Take take a look at the video. <laughs> One thing I've noticed about Ghanaians is that when it comes to things like this, you will see it's like strength from nowhere. It's like a spirit. It just enters Ghanaians. And they just end up doing certain things they are not supposed to do. It is the Ghana police service that is supposed to handle this matter. It is the Ghana police service that is supposed to investigate this matter. It, unnecessary actions like this, before you realize, then you will end up lynching innocent people. You don't really dig into matters properly. Yesterday I said something that, what if they did disseminate the information, but it's not everybody who received the information that they were going to explode the rocks? What if? So why don't you wait for the Ghana Police Service to investigate this matter before you decide to take matter into your own hands? Because Adriana would be a boss at Chinese in any time. What if you want to cry? Now you hit him on the head. Now you're saying, what's wrong with some Ghanaians? I asked him to cry him, but anyways. Let's see what netizens are saying. Um, White Love says, the way these people don't regard the blacks in their country, but when they come to Ghana, we pamper them, it's just mind-blowing. Hmm, Africa. So let me tell you something. Africans, or Ghanaians specifically, we are very welcoming. We are warm people. We have been properly brought up. We have been properly trained. So even if you are treating us bad, we are, going, we are not necessarily going to pay you back with bad. We are not like that. In Tunuko Amo Mines, not somebody to too bad, that's fine. But when they come here, we'll show them what real love is. You understand me? Yeah. So this one is no news. Don't be too alarmed about it. Nanama says, there is absolutely no way this type of reckless endangerment of local citizens will be tolerated anywhere on this planet. Apart from Ghana and Africa, the families better sue the hell out of the company and make them pay for this. Lawless country makes me so mad. Cast photography, J says, so you're knocking head plus the two by four. <laughs> and what do you need to do more? <laughs> what saved him was a helmet. Okay, yeah, no banker. Rastavari says, no violence, please, but do what needs to be done. Exactly, no violence. Just hand them over to the Ghana Police Service and let them investigate. That's it. Oh. Also, Kenny says, but this is not the best way to handle this. Let the police take control of the situation. These people should be fined to settle the victims because I know they have taken 50% 
of their contract money already. Yeah. Let the police handle it. Um, Abitrum GA says the hit on the head was too personal. Like, like it was very personal. That was only Cody Tipa. On the equality. Oh my goodness. Ghana is a very interesting country, and up until the 7th of January 2025, we are going to keep on hearing and seeing a lot of very interesting stories pop up on our social media. And that is the reason that you have to stay glued to your TV sets and make sure that every single morning you don't miss out on Prime Morning because on What's Trending, we'll be bringing you all the updates of all the juicy stuff that will be happening here in the country.